and welcome to this course about FPGA. In this course you will learn how to design digital systems. Before we start with the course, I would like to give you some facts about FPGA. FPGA is one of those words that we just listen or we just hear people talking talking about it and we don't even know what it is exactly but it's just getting so trendy at this time that we think like oh my god what is this fancy thing that we can even use I mean you, you're kind of impressed about it so what is actually FPGA FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Arrays. That, this means in simple English that you have some logical and sequential primitive building blocks that you can program together and you can program them on site. That's why they call it field. It means you can build up your circuit and then program it and even change your design through the life cycle of the product so as you have noticed it those FPGAs have been around for long time since it has been developed in the 80s and uh, something specific about FPGA is that they are using a different programming paradigm. It means FPGAs are programmed in a way that can, um, in a way that allows parallel computing. It means it can run thousands of tasks at the same time. Majorly. We use two different languages to program uh, FPGAs to define the architecture of our circuit, of our functions that are running. So for that, we use VHDL or Verilog. By the way, VHDL has been developed by the US Defense Office. Uh, just coming back about uh, the program programmability of FPGA, you can use FPGA to run some controllers, you know, like uh, a system. You can use a system to have a temperature control. So you have a sensor taking the temperature. You have a analog to digital converter that is turning the analog signal into a digital signal and then in the FPGA you have your uh, control loop so you have you can have a PDI which stands for proportional derivative and integral controller that can then that can then control uh, that can then compute the command for your actuators it can be a fan that that is going to be running faster in order to cool the system so that you have a control over the temperature so this one was just an easy example and you can also have you can also use FPGA to do some process monitoring or to do some video processing because since with video you have a lot of data using FPGAs which can have thousands of pins sometimes it, it can have up to a thousand of pins you can really process a lot of data in parallel so this drives us to the comparison between FPGA and CPU normal microcontroller are using CPU and the computer that I'm using in order to record this course is also using a CPU. 
What is the problem with CPUs? CPUs are sequentials. That means it can only run one single task at a time. But FPGA are a lot faster than CPU. Why? Because with CP with FPGA we can use what we call parallel computing. So an FPGA can run thousands of tasks at the same time. Thanks to the great amount of pins, the great amount of logical primitive that it has inside of it. FPGA are reconfigurable in field. I already explained this part. And another difference between CPU and FPGA is the fact that the CPU has to be operated, has to be driven by an operated system. So it means you have to program your CPU in C, more basically, in order to use the hardware behind it. So that's it to the facts. I would like to go further to come back to our course. So where do you need to start this course? I uh, highly recommend you to purchase this board. This is the dev board from Numato Lab. It's the cheapest that you can have. It's less than $30. And um, you can purchase it from India or for or from uh, the US. But anyway, you just have to go to their website and regarding according to the country where you live, they will decide from which country they are going to send it to you. So in this board, we have an FPGA in the middle. This one you see here with all those pins that you can see is our FPGA. This is the Spartan 3A. What are you going to learn by taking this course? First we will start by setting up a simple project where we will synthesize a OR gate and we will also learn how to synthesize a D flip-flop and flip-flop is a very important building uh, sorry building block for uh, for realizing memory so you can use D flip-flop in order to implement a RAM or uh, in order to implement a register so actually D flip-flop can be used to implement a register and a register can be used to implement a RAM. So we will see how to use a seven segment display, how to use a binary counter and uh, how to connect the seven segment display to the binary counter so that we can see what the counter is showing. We will also do some computer sciences. So it means we will see how to synthesize a multiplexer, how to realize a register, how to realize the ALU. ALU stands for arithmetic and logic unit and also a, P, a PC but PC doesn't stand for personal computer, no not at all, it stands for program counter and you will see what it is, I will explain you as we get to that point and we will also see how to realize a RAM I mean, this computer here has a RAM, which is the the memory unit that we use in order to take the data to store the result of some computation that the machine is doing, that the CPU is doing. And we will also see how to realize a ROM, a read-only memory. So the course will not only be theoretical, but we will also see some practical stuff like how to control or how to configure a LED matrix using registers, how to do the same thing but using a RAM. We will also see how to interface an LCD display 
We will also see how to interface the microcontroller like Arduino and we will also see how to control the speed of a DC motor using a PWM. This stands for Pulse Wave Modulation. So that's basically it to uh, the introduction of this class. But I would like to show you one of my projects that I've realized. So for that, we have to switch on the desktop camera and then I will show you a tiny project. So here you can see my Albert V2 board. And you can even read the name of the main switches that we are going to be using uh, in this video for this demonstration. So what I have realized here is a binary counter. When I press S1, it increments 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So it's actually counting from 0 to 15. And you can see that we also have the binary counter here, which is displaying 1, 1, 1, 1, which stands for F. So that's it, actually, for the small demonstration. Oh, I forgot to show something. If I press S1, it goes back to 0. I press S1 again, I mean switch 1, so SW1. Now it goes to 1, 2, 3, and if I press switch 2, it goes to 0. This is our reset. I can be in F, no, in 7, let's say at 7, and I press this one, it goes back to 0. So what I can do in order to improve this small project can be uh, making the counter not just counting up but also counting down so like 0 f e d that would have been something much more interesting and you will see that with vhdl or using this description language it's quite easy to implement so we will then switch back to the desktop camera Oh, sorry, to the computer. So, as you have seen, using VHDL or using FPGA program in VHDL, you can realize a lot of small projects. So, I hope that you like this video if it was so please leave a thumb up and don't forget to share this video in order to uh, make me uh, publish some more videos in english and uh, the idea behind it is really to give you a course that can give you some skills in order to be able to design some FPGA based solutions. Thank you for watching.